Hello, Abby. My name's Amy. May I examine your eyes? Yes. There are many useful signs on examination of the eyes. An exhaustive list is in the book. Look at the head and eyelid position and consider the parts of the eye in turn. Look for proptosis or forward bulging of the eyeball from above. Now we test visual acuity. Do you wear glasses? No. Ask the patient to use their distance glasses if they use them. Please cover your right eye. Ensure good ambient lighting. Please use the chart at its specified distance and ensure that it doesn't move. Ask the patient to cover one eye with a card and read from the top down until they can no longer distinguish the letters. Please cover your left eye. If the patient cannot read down to the bottom line, use a pinhole. If they can't read the top line of the chart, bring the chart closer until they can and record this distance. Repeat this process for near vision. Please cover your right eye. Consider the lighting again and the patient's reading glasses. Hold this at a comfortable distance and start reading from the top paragraph. The card is printed with prose in type of various sizes. Record the smallest size that can be read accurately. Please cover your left eye and continue reading. And better lighted than any than those of any metropolis in Europe. Thank you. To test the patient's visual fields, sit directly facing the patient about one metre away. Please keep your head still and look directly into my eyes. Test for a homonymous defect with all four eyes open. Please tell me when you see my finger moving. Now. Hold your hands out to their full extent and wiggle your fingertips. Ask the patient to indicate when they see it move. Do this at 2, 4, 8 and 10 o'clock. Test for sensory inattention. Please point to the finger that you see moving. Both you and the patient should keep your eyes open. Check both sides at the same time. Please cover your right eye. Test peripheral visual fields in one eye at a time. Please look directly at my eye. The patient covers one eye and you shut your opposite eye. Please tell me when you see my finger moving. Now. Test each quadrant separately and compare your visual field with the patient's. You need to be seated close together so that you can hold your finger in an equivalent position for both your and the patient's eye. Please cover your left eye. Please look directly at my eye and tell me when you see my Start with your finger in the periphery out of view and wiggle the tip. Bring your wiggling finger along the diagonal towards the centre of vision. The patient should indicate as soon as they see it moving. Now. 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 Next, we test the central visual field using a red hat pin. Please cover your right eye. And you close your left. What colour is the hat pin? Red. Test for colour desaturation. Please keep your head still and look directly at my eye. Please tell me when the pin disappears. Make a rough map of the patient's blind spot and compare this to your own. Please tell me when it reappears. Now. Can you see it here? Yes. And here? Compare yes. perception of the hat here. pin in the four quadrants of the visual field centrally. Ask specifically about colour desaturation. Next we examine the eye movements. Hold your finger at least 50 centimetres away from the patient. Please keep your head still and look at my finger. Please follow my finger and tell me if you see double at any time. Move your finger to each side and up and down, tracing the letter H in the air. Look for any divergence of the gaze, which you would see, or double vision, which the patient would report. You may also detect abnormal patterns of movement, such as nystagmus.
Examine the pupils for shape and symmetry. Please look straight ahead. Take account of the ambient lighting. Continue looking straight ahead. I'm going to shine a light in your eyes. Bring a bright light from the side to shine on the pupil. Look for constriction of the illuminated pupil, the direct light reflex, and of the opposite pupil, the consensual light reflex. Look at the accommodation reflex and gaze convergence. Please focus on a point on the far wall. Present an object at about 15 centimetres. Now look at the tip of this pen. You should see the eyes converge and the pupils constricting as the eyes accommodate. Use an ophthalmoscope to look at the retina and optic nerve head. I'm going to have a look at the back of your eye. Start with the patient's right eye. Hold the ophthalmoscope in your right hand and use your right eye. Find zero and rotate the lenses clockwise to lens 10. Please look down. Gently retract the upper eyelid. Now focus on a point on the far wall. Start at a distance of about 10 centimetres and bring the red reflex into focus. The cornea, iris and lens can be seen and any opacity will appear black. Now come close to the patient's head such that you touch the hand you are resting on their forehead. As you do, rotate the lenses anti-clockwise until the retina comes into focus. Please look up. By asking the patient to divert their gaze and making your own movements, systematically examine the retina and left, finishing with the fovea. Please look directly at the light. First, test light touch sensation. I'm going to touch your face with some cotton wool. Please could you close your eyes and tell me when you feel me touch you. On both sides, test the three divisions of the nerve, the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. Now. 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 Repeat the test for pain sensation. I'm now going to touch your face with a small pin. Please close your eyes and tell me if you feel it sharp. Carefully test each of the three areas on both sides. Be aware that brainstem lesions may cause sensory loss in an onion skin pattern. Carefully dispose of the sharp. Yes. 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 Use an orange stick to test touch on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. I'm going to touch your tongue with this. Please close your eyes and stick out your tongue. Thank you. Do you feel it the same on both sides? Yes. You can also ask the patient to indicate with a hand when they feel you touching them. Assess the motor function now. Look for wasting in the muscles of mastication. Please clench your teeth. Feel the bulk and contraction in the masseters. Please open your mouth against my hand. Carefully provide resistance to mouth opening, testing the pterygoid muscles. Next, test the corneal reflex. Draw out a wisp of cotton wool and dampen it to form a gentle point. I'm going to gently touch your eye. Please look up for me. Gently depress the lower eyelid and lightly touch the edge of the cornea. Look for direct and consensual blinking. Lastly, the jaw jerk reflex. I'm gently going to tap your chin. Ask the patient to let their mouth hang loosely open. Place your forefinger across the midline between the lower lip and chin. Look for reflex closing of the jaw. An absent or minimal response is normal. Just look straight ahead for me. Inspect the whole face for asymmetry, including differences in blinking or eye closure. Keeping your head still. Can you look up towards the ceiling and raise your eyebrows? Look for wrinkling of the forehead. And now can you show me your teeth like this? Again, look for asymmetry. Now close your eyes and don't let me open them. Test power by gently trying to overcome eye closure. 
Now can you blow out your cheeks for me, please? And hold them out as I try to press them in. Try and push air out through the patient's lips. Stand behind the patient for the whispered voice test. I'm going to whisper in your ear. Please can you repeat after me what I say. Mask hearing in the contralateral ear by rubbing the tragus. Use a variety of numbers and letters and perform the test in a quiet room. I'm going to do the same in your left ear. Start at about 15 centimetres. Hearing a whisper at 60 centimetres approximates to unimpaired hearing. Hearing loss should be formally measured with audiometry. Use a tuning fork to help differentiate conductive from sensory neural hearing loss. First, Rinne's test. Can you hear this? Yes. Tell me when you hear it stop. The base of the vibrating tuning fork is gently pressed against the mastoid process. Now. Can you still hear it? Yes. This demonstrated that air conduction is better than bone conduction, which is normal. Air conduction relies on the function of the outer and middle ear. Again, can you hear this? Yes. Tell me when you hear it stop. If sound transmission through bone is greater now. than that through air, then the test is said to be negative. This indicates conductive deafness. For Weber's test, place the fork in the midline. Does this sound louder in either ear? Normally, the sound is described in the middle and heard equally in both ears. Interpretation of both tuning fork tests is more subtle than it initially appears. For me. The dix holpike manoeuvre can elicit positional vertigo due to vestibular disease. This vigorous manoeuvre is not suitable for all patients. When the patient lies back, the head should overhang the edge. I'm going to lie you down rapidly and turn your head to the side. Please could you look straight into my eyes. The patient's head should extend 30 degrees beyond horizontal and rotate 45 degrees to one side. Do you feel dizzy or sick? No. Watch the eyes carefully for nystagmus. It may take 20 seconds for this or symptoms to occur. The pattern of response can differentiate between a lesion in the inner ear or central nervous system. Repeat the test, turning the head to the other side. Start with the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. Could you cough for me, please? <coughs> An effective cough requires vagus nerve control of the vocal cords, as does producing a note. Open your mouth for me, please, and say ah. Uh... Look at the movements of the palate and uvula uh... using a torch. If the palate is weak, you may be able to make air escape through the nose. You blow out your cheeks for me, please. I'm just going to try and squeeze them in. Consider using the water swallow test in fully conscious patients before moving on to the accessory nerve. Inspect and then palpate the sternocleidomastoid muscles looking for wasting or hypertrophy. And can you look over your right shoulder for me please? And over your left shoulder. Carefully resisting the movement with your hand. And swing your legs over the side of the bed. From behind the patient, inspect and palpate the trapezius muscle, looking for wasting or asymmetry. I'm now going to feel your shoulders. Shrug your shoulders up and stop me from pushing them down. Again, test power against resistance. And pop your legs back up. Next, examine the hypoglossal or twelfth cranial nerve. Can you just open your mouth for me, please? Look at the tongue at rest for wasting, fasciculation or involuntary movement. Use a torch if necessary. And stick your tongue out. Look for deviation or involuntary movement. And move it from side to side. Demonstrating active movements. Pop your tongue back in and press it against your cheek. Stop me from pushing it in. To test power in the tongue muscles. And the same on the other side. Then test lingual speech. And now say, yellow lorry. Yellow lorry. The swallow test is also relevant. Thank you.